today. AMD goes after NVIDIA. The RX 7600 is already on sale. NVIDIA has a big surprise and the RTX 5000 series is getting a massive jump in performance. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, AMD is continuing to go after NVIDIA pretty hard when it comes to VRAM and their GPUs. This time, we have a new graph that was shared by the company's Director of Gaming Marketing. And as you can see, it compares NVIDIA's RTX 3070 to AMD's RX 6800. Remember that the 6800 recently saw a pretty large price drop to below $500. And given the 3070 is still priced right around there, it makes sense that AMD would compare the two GPUs. Of course, these are still last-gen cards, but at least for now, neither company really has a replacement for them. Now, before I go over the chart, you'll notice that it says this comparison is across ray tracing and raster performance, but he admits in this tweet that this was a mistake and it should have just read rasterization. Either way, AMD compared the two cards in 32 games, and according to this, AMD 6800 beats the 3070 by 13.4% on average, and it goes from a loss of 2% to winning up to a whopping 31%. Of course, these are likely cherry-picked games, though I will say that they do include quite a few popular titles. Once again, don't forget that this is the 6800, so a higher tier GPU, but they're priced fairly similar. Not only that, but as you can see down here, AMD points out the fact that the 6800 has double the VRAM. And as I pointed out multiple times before, games do seem to require more of it than ever. And when you're ready to learn why things like memory are so important in a PC, See, do what I did and take the computer memory course with today's sponsor. Brilliant! The online learning platform that I trust when I need to learn something new in computer science. Whether it's neural networks that power AI or how wireless communication actually works. There's even a course on quantum computing. But the best part about Brilliant isn't the types of courses they have. It's how they actually teach you. See, Brilliant was built to teach the STEM field, so they know what they're doing. Instead of lecturing you or having you memorize a bunch of formulas, Brilliant gets you to jump in there and do it yourself. And they do it with these unique and interesting puzzles that make learning actually fun. Not only that, but when you visit brilliant.org slash gamermeld, you can try out Brilliant for 30 days free. Plus, when you sign up using brilliant.org slash gamermeld, you'll get 20% off the annual premium. You can't beat that. Next up for today, it looks like AMD's next GPU, the RX 7600, is already on sale. In fact, someone in Singapore was found selling Sapphire's Radeon RX 7600 Pulse GPU for 545 Singapore dollars, or around $410 US. Of course, this is likely an early release price, I wouldn't expect it to be anywhere near this with the final release. And obviously, given the GPU market right now, I wouldn't suggest pre-ordering any card higher than MSRP. Simply put, most GPUs that have recently released haven't been sold out. Now, what's interesting about this is that the Sapphire Pulse GPU was recently pictured on shelves by a retailer in Asia. And as you can see, this clearly confirms that the 7600 is not only AMD's next GPU release, but that it does in fact come with 8GB of memory. That is still a bit of a disappointment, but not a surprise. Not only that, but when we get really close to the packaging, we can see that it also confirms the card comes with 32 RDNA 3 CUs, which means 2048 stream processing. Processors. It also looks to come with 32 megabytes of infinity cache. At the end of the day, AMD's GPU is set for release fairly soon, so we won't have to wait long. Next up, NVIDIA looks to have a huge surprise up their sleeve when it comes to their upcoming GPU. As many of you know, NVIDIA is planning to release an 8GB RTX 4060 Ti very soon, and we actually have an update on the release date for that. But before I get to that, the leaker Megasize GPU recently tweeted that NVIDIA is not only planning an 8GB 4060 Ti, but also a 16GB variant. That's right, in a move that's reminiscent of NVIDIA's original 3060 release, which saw the GPU come with 12 gigabytes of VRAM more than the 3060 Ti, 3070, and 3070 Ti. This time it's the 4060 Ti, but it'll have more than the 4070 or 4070 Ti. According to the tweet, these are releasing in May, but I'm assuming he meant announcement because he later claimed that the 16 gigabyte variant will be available in July, as well as the 8 gigabyte RTX 4060. Either way, this is really interesting given how hard AMD has pushed at NVIDIA for having less VRAM in most of their GPUs. 
GPUs. Not only that, but regarding this, Video Cards has since confirmed with their sources that Nvidia is planning to release three GPUs in the next 10 weeks, with the 8GB RTX 4060 Ti set for release on May 24th, which is a day before the RX 7600 is supposed to release. Then the 12GB 4060 Ti is set for release in the second half of July, and finally the 8GB RTX 4060 is set for release in the first half of July. Basically, Nvidia has a ton of GPUs coming very soon, and they aren't playing around when it comes to VRAM. And lastly for today, we have a couple massive stories regarding Nvidia's next-gen RTX 5000 series of GPUs. Starting things off, we have an update from the incredibly accurate leaker when it comes to Nvidia's GPUs, Copite 7 Kimmy. Early last month, he replied in a tweet from WCCF Tech regarding Nvidia's next-gen Blackwell. In it, he claimed that it will not use TSMC's 3 nanometer process. Well, it looks like that has now changed as he flat claims that he was wrong. So the RTX 50 cards are likely set to be on the 3 nanometer process. And this brings me to the main story on Nvidia's next gen GPUs. It comes from a new video by Red Gaming Tech, who originally claimed that the RTX 50 cards were built on TSMC's 3 nanometer process. According to him, we're looking at a customized 3 nanometers for Nvidia. We're also still looking at a whopping 2 to 2.6 times performance targets, with 2 times likely being for their gaming cards. Of course, we've heard this before, but according to the update, Nvidia isn't reaching those targets, so they're testing out GPUs with more cores than what we previously saw, which was a 144SM GPU for the top-end gaming die. Think the 5090. Of course, even a bit more than 144SMs isn't that much more than what we have in the 4090. But remember that according to this, Blackwell is set to get much higher clocks and a full architectural overhaul. Either way, Nvidia seems committed to that two times performance boost over the RTX 40 series. And once interesting is that this should be a real performance boost, instead of what we got from frame generation out of DLSS 3. So if Nvidia hits these two times performance targets, we could be seeing this in at least ray tracing performance or possibly even rasterization. Basically, if this is right, Nvidia's next gen GPUs are set to get the kind of performance leap that we haven't seen in years. Hopefully it doesn't also come with the biggest leap in price. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for Nvidia's next-gen RTX 5000 GPUs? Or are you just ready for more mainstream cards? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to try out Brilliant for free at brilliant.org slash gamermelt. And as always, have a great day!